Good morning. It's another fine, beautiful, bright, sunny day here in eastern North Carolina. It has rained for the past day and a half, and because of that, the mosquitoes are going amok. So today, I'm going to use some of this uh, mosquito beater. This is not sponsored. I'm going to use this under my front porches. I think I also might use this over in the mound. It'll just help disperse the mosquitoes, especially if we just walk out on the front porch, we won't get eaten alive. And I'm going to try to... There's a mosquito right now in the microphone. I think it thinks it's a furry animal because it has a furry cover and it's trying to find the body to bite and drink blood from. Yeah, that's not going to happen, buddy. Anyway, uh, so today, we're, uh, because it's going to be another brutal hot sun, sunny day here, we're just going to go around, do some uh, looking at the garden, see what's cooking, uh, clean up a few things if needed, deadheading some stuff, and a few other odds and ends. And if you stick around to the very end, there'll be a little surprise at the end for you. So let's get to doing what we got to do. And uh, first things first, I'm going to put down this mosquito beater. The next thing we're going to do to try to control the whole mosquito population here is drop one of these uh, mosquito dunks into each of the water barrels. If you have something like a water barrel uh, or a container where you keep water for watering purposes or that kind of thing, uh, these mosquito dunks are pretty necessary otherwise your uh, water barrel can become a breeding happy environment nursery thing for the mosquitoes and no one wants that no one wants more mosquitoes let's go do the other water barrel with the sun glaring in my eyes off of the uh, white driveway here I forgot to hit the record button. So what I was just saying is uh, the next thing to do is go around the garden. Any open containers, uh, watering cans, that kind of thing that has any water in it should dump it out. Again, just to keep down the environment in which the mosquitoes can breed and repopulate. Now the buckets here are turned upside down and I did that for a previous storm. But this water, this tray here is filled with water. A dahlia cutting which is doing quite well. Comfrey fertilizer, not OJ. I'll be using this soon to water quite a few of the plants in the garden, especially like the dahlia garden where I think they need a good fertilizing. Hopefully it picks up my dahlias for us and nice fall blooming. This is another dahlia cutting. It hasn't been doing so well but now I see some new growth in it. Perhaps it just needed to stay a whole lot wet. Also seeing the new growth, I'm thinking it now has roots. So if that's the case, I may put this up into a little pot and uh, let it grow on. And last but not least, the Verbena bonarosis that I uh, started from seed. Um, this was the only one out of probably 3,000 seeds that I started. Uh, looks like it's going to start flowering soon. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, I really should get him in the ground. And I do have space for him over in the flower garden. So I'll do that this week sometime. I gotta show you my friend here that I have keeping me company underneath the uh, sunshade here. I think I'm gonna name her Gertrude. I don't know if you could see any of that, but basically it's a large green garden spider, which is a common thing apparently down here, but uh, still freaks me out. 
I've tried to dissuade her and get her to move on, but apparently she doesn't want to, and she has caught several large bugs, mostly uh, very large flies. <sighs> Moving on. Since we are in the flower garden right now, the flower, since we are in the vegetable garden, I'm gonna um, turn around and go through the melon. And what I'm looking to do is remove any excess flowers or fruits that may be forming. The reason being is, is I want the melon to turn around and put all of its energy into the existing fruit. So this is something I just saw recently on television. I think it was Gardener's World. Uh, if you've done this trick before, let me know in the comments. Or if you've done this and it hasn't worked out as well as you might have thought, please, again, let me know in the comments. So let me get to snipping. Here's a fruit that was damaged recently by me with the weed whacker. So there's no point in the plant putting its energy into something that is never going to grow right. The mums are also starting to encroach on the walkway, so what I want to do is give them a trim back and maybe they'll reflush in time for the fall. We'll see if those reflush a little bit uh, for the fall over the next few weeks. Oh, at least the walkway is a little clearer now. My dahlias aren't looking fabulous. A lot of them are alive. I think a few have died or perhaps gone into dormancy already because they didn't get a great start. Either way, uh, I do have dahlias growing. They're just not where they should be. And that could be for a variety of reasons. The heat and humidity is not one of them. These are South, these are South and Central American plants. They can take the little bit of heat and humidity we've had. This is Arabian Knight and he's been a strong performer. Been doing very well this year. So I'm just gonna turn around and give him a deadhead and uh, We'll move on to more plants. He already has a new bud. It's looking great. I hope that many of these do survive till next year and maybe in the fall we get a good flush. Last year when I grew my dahlias I started them along the fence of the veg garden and a lot of them turned around and they just sprouted up fast and in June and July I had a lot of uh, flowers going so I'm hopeful maybe uh, get something similar this year, but it, later in the fall. I don't know if it's the heat and the sweat going down my back. It's just, sorry, a little too much information there. Or just the mosquitoes, but my back feels like it's being bitten alive, eaten alive there. Maybe it is the mosquitoes, I don't know. I have bug spray on for what it's worth. <laughs> Behind me here are the gladiolus. These, this is the first batch of gladiolus I put in the ground. These are the first ones that are flowering. And already there's quite a few that are going over. And with the rain and the storm last night, some of them have seemingly fell, fell over, possibly the stems are broken. So what I'm just gonna do right now is I'm just gonna go through and give them a dead head. Simple as that. If you've grown gladiolus, please let me know in the comments below. Should I deadhead them, should I not? I'm going to now but you can leave in the comments whether I should or shouldn't. There's another batch of gladiolus that are coming up uh, just uh, here off camera, and I have some on the back deck in pots. They're, uh, they're, they're just now starting to flower. These over here are not starting to flower yet. I think this was the last area I did, so they're probably about, maybe about two weeks out. No, I lied, about a week out, because I already see a couple of uh, flower stems poking up. So again, if you've grown gladiolus before and you know whether I should or shouldn't deadhead them or if I'm making a huge mistake, please let me know in those comments below. Uh, 
that's about it. I only, I only did a few. I didn't do a lot. And again, I'm not sure whether I should or shouldn't be deadheading them. I should have Googled it or at least looked on my phone beforehand, but it's hot. It's getting hotter. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's supposed to get up to about 96, probably feels like 104. So I'm going to call it quits for today. I may come back out this evening and do a few other odds and end tasks. But at this point in the year, that's kind of what I'm doing now is odds and end tasks. Click that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to be notified when I do post up a new video. And this way, you'll see what misadventure I get into next. Now that I'm thinking about it, I have to uh, go around with the deer spray since we had all that rain in the last 24 hours and spray a bunch of the plants to try to keep the deer off of them. And uh, hopefully I'll have some footage soon on the trail cameras to show you, to share with you. Check out all those links below. Oh, and uh, here's that little uh, special surprise I was uh, saving for the very end. I'm going to catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.